Praise the Lord. Nothing ever comes in its finished state. Nothing. Everything that matters in life has to be built. You must build your career. And that's why we happily celebrate those of you who are doing that. You are going from one level to the other. You are building your life. You must build your business. And that's why businesses grow and become better. You must build your marriage. Because nothing ever comes in its finished state. You must build your family. Even your relationships, you have to build them. So to the graduating class of 2019, and to everyone else, my word for you this morning is that you were created to build. What did I say? You were created to build. Why? Because nothing ever comes in its finished state. I want us to rise on our feet as we take our Bible reading this morning from the book of Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Philippians 1, 12 through 18. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. May the Lord add understanding to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Because we know that even our lives individually have been built. I want to thank you because we also know that if the foundation is faulty, there's nothing that the righteous can do. And that's why it is essential, Lord Almighty, that you give your children understanding this morning. As they build their life, as they build their relationships, as they build their careers, their businesses, their families, their marriages, Let them know what their assignments are from you so that we can live according to your will. Let your word be understood and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Thank you, choir. I want you to look at the person sitting around you and say to them, you are a builder. Are a builder. I don't think they believed you. Maybe you should pray for them. 
Look at them again and say, your building project will not fail. What you are building for your life will not fail. The building projects over your children will not fail. Your marriage will not fail. Your relationships will not fail. It is important that you know that you are a builder. And as a builder, you will succeed. The greatest partner of a true builder is the Holy Spirit. You see, when you are building something, you are creating something from nothing. Or you are improving on something that was already existing. And when you are doing that, you are like God. You are creating something into existence that was not before. And you need to be able to imagine it. Amen? You need to be able to see it before you can build it. You need to know where you are going with what you are putting together before you get there. And that is why your best friend is what? The Holy Spirit. Just Christ said in John chapter 16, verse 13, he says, when I leave, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth shall come, and he will guide you into all truth. You see, the assignment of our life is known to who? To God. And if you are going to build what God expects you to build, you need guidance from God. Amen? Amen? You need guidance to bring into being what is yet to be. That is why, what do you call vision? A vision is the ability to see something before it comes to be. But one thing I want you to understand is this. Having a vision can be taught just like having an excellent spirit can be taught. You can be taught to have a vision. Amen? Some people can guide your mind, like I'm about to do this morning, to project beyond it now. You must be able to see it. A few Sundays ago, you came to church. And the bookshop and the, the cafe was looking like someone like this. It was, wow. You can imagine what it was like. But you came back the very next Sunday and it was looking different, like this. We need to build the technical department. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know you got the gist. The point I'm making is that people came to me and said, Pastor, how, how could you do it in one week? And I said, you must see what you are going to be before it is built. But what I'm saying in essence is that it can be taught. You can be taught to see before you see, which is the character of every builder. Amen? You can be taught. You can be you can train yourself to have an inner mind. You can train yourself to see the new before the new comes. Now, let me tell you what is unfortunate. Let me tell you what is unfortunate. The unfortunate truth is this, and I want you to listen to this. When most of us see our God-given project, we run away from it. We avoid it. 
some of us come to the conclusion that that project is not ready. Some of us come to the conclusion that this is not what I want in life. I don't, I don't need this. You know, I, I know you say that word a lot. I don't need this. You know. But that's your project. We step away from relationships because we think that relationship is stressful. But that person was meant to be what? I can't hear you. Your project. All the time I see gifted people, gifted people. I don't want to tell you my story. The only reason why I'm a pastor today was because I saw something that was broken. And I chose not to step away from it. It was a battle that I had. That's another story. But I've seen gifted people leave a church. That is a project for them. God gave them a project to come and improve his work. But they feel that, oh, this is too stressful. I, I'm not coping with the culture. I can't, I can't handle this culture. But you are designed to build and make the environment better. People have left the women that they were meant to marry because they were looking for a finished work. Forgetting that they were called to improve them. I'm not saying that everybody is your project. I want you to understand that. So don't go and come and tell me tomorrow, Pastor, you are the one. <laughs> and that's why I said your best friend is what? The Holy Spirit must be your guide. I have had friends that I, I, they've been stressing me since we were 16. I'm not kidding. They've been a, a burden. They are still my friends at 60. Why? Because even then, God showed me that they are my project. It is the responsibility of a builder to make an attempt at improving whatever they come in contact with. That's the responsibility of a builder, and you are a builder. You must leave people and situations better than you met them. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God gave us fivefold blessing. Remember? He said we should do what? Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and do what? Have dominion. That dominion part of it requires you to build. Amen? Now, as a builder, our projects are different. Are you with me? Our projects are different. Some have easier projects. And I know that some of you, the project that God has put next to you is tough. But it's still your project. I'm telling you. That's why God gave some people five talents and he gave some what? One. But he said something in Matthew 25, verse 15. He said he knew why he did it. God knows why he gave you that terrible project. It's because you have what? I can't hear you. You have the ability to cope. He gave you according to your ability. God gave you that crazy husband for a reason. It's not to punish you. He's your project. Because you have the ability to do what? To handle him. You have carried. You must carry forever. (laughs) 
God gave you that selfish wife for a reason. Not to punish you. She's your project. God did not put you in this church to criticize it. It's your project to improve it. Yeah. I know you, most of you ran from Nigeria. Maybe you have ran from your project. Everything that God does is to bring glory to his name. Every blind person was for a reason. Every lame around you, every crippled person around you, they are there because God knows you have the ability and the wherewithal to improve them. So that who will you glorify? God. Let me tell you something that is fundamentally true. Are you ready for this? Before God gets to a place, he sends builders ahead of himself. Before he gets to a place, he will send builders. He calls 70 in Luke chapter 10 verse 1. Luke chapter 10 verse 1. He called 70 people. And if you read those lines very, very carefully, it says that after these things, the Lord appointed 70. And sent them what? Two by two before his face into every city and place where he is what? He himself is about to. Where he's about to go. When God wants to convert a terrible person to himself, he will send you first. To you, who are you meeting? Speak English, please. <laughs> you are meeting a terrible person. But God has sent you to that terrible person. Why? Because he's coming right behind you. He's coming right behind you. And it is what you do with that project that will determine what God will do when he gets there. He did not say that every project is yours. He knew that some projects you will have to walk away from. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what Josh Christ said to them in verse 5 and 6. Let's read it. He says, but whatever house you enter. You see, what did I say first? He sent you ahead of himself, right? But he says, whatever house you enter, what do you do? Peace be to this, God, to this house. You introduce your God to that person. You introduce your goodness to that person. You introduce your, 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 your increase. You build that person. They may not accept you. They may not accept that which is coming behind you. What do you do? Verse 6. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest there. But if it not, it will return to you. But you must have done your assignment, which is to what? Which is to build. Amen? You cannot run away from every situation. In John chapter 9, Jesus Christ had done the same thing. He had sent his disciples ahead of him. And as they were passing by, they saw a blind man. And they had an opportunity. The disciples saw an opportunity to criticize the fairness of God. They wanted to criticize the fairness of God. And they said to God, Jesus Christ, okay, now I will cut you. This man has been blind from birth. Who sinned? John chapter 9, verse 3. He says, who, who sinned? And just guy said, this man did not sin, nor did his parents sin. But he was made blind so that the glory of God can show. Do you know how many people are waiting for the glory of God to be revealed through your intervention? Paul made a statement in Philippians 1 that we read for our Bible reading. I want us to just look at it from verse 15 to 18. Controversial, but I consider it something that is deeply true. He was saying that no matter every condition, it does circumstance, whether in presence or in truth, Christ is preached. In this I, I rejoice. In everything you do, you must build whoever you come in contact with. 
1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. It says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. He says, while you are doing it, your critics will come, intending to bring you down. They will. When they see you, they will tell you, why are you hanging around that nuisance? He says in 1 Peter 2, verse 12, it says, having your conduct honorable among Gentiles. Let when people see you, it does not matter. They will see that this one is from King's Court. He says, let, let them see that when they speak against you as evildoers, they say, oh, you know those Nigerian guys, those African guys? But when it comes to you, they may by your good works, which they have observed, glorify who? God in the day of visitation. I think I should boast a little bit. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I'll tell you. In the last few months and a half, I've been getting a barrage of requests from both the governor's office and Senator Pedu's office. They've taken me out for lunch twice now. They are inviting me for dinner this week. And what do they want? You want to come and visit us? I'm saying that, in, listen to me. And I was wondering, ah, why the trouble? Why so much? Because, of course, the first time, I said, no, I don't mix politics. The second time, they said, ah, even if you don't mix politics, at least hear us. Let us, we are a conservative, God-fearing church. Hear us. And you may, you may have requests that will take to the government. So that was the second meeting, so I was getting easier. But I wanted to know why. Why us? They said, look, they have looked around. They were looking for a corporate Nigerian conservative church, and we are the coolest. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make to you is this. In all the things you do, do it because you want to give glory to who? God. It is important that your conduct in and out of church glorifies God. And how do you do that? How do you do that? You must be determined to improve whatever you come in contact with. It does not matter. It does just... When the first delegate came into our church, they, we haven't even done our lounge by then. They just went... Whatever you do, whatever you see that is imperfect, make it perfect. At least make it better. Because most of the challenges you are running from were designed by God to glorify him and advertise you. They were placed in your path intentionally. Because it will glorify God and advertise you. To you, they seem like what? Afflictions. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, it says, our light afflictions, what do they do? Which is but for a moment, is working what? A far and more exceeding eternal glory. Those things that you see as afflictions, those problems, when you solve them, they will glorify you. Who do you think God calls a successful man? Who does God call a successful man? A successful man before God is a man that can handle the hand he was dealt. That's what, is, that's what he defined as success. It doesn't matter whether he gave you five and you handled it or he gave you one. As long as you can handle what he gave to you. And that's what Jesus Christ said in Matthew 15, verse 24. He says, if you want to come after me, deny yourself, change your circumstances, and then carry your cross. Whatever circumstance, you are born poor. Look the poorest, coolest person. Whatever cross you are given, you are given the crazy husband, the crazy wife. No, that's your cross. Carry it with pride. But leave that thing a better thing before, than when you met it. Tell somebody you're a builder. And your responsibility 
is to build. To build. You should be going around looking for work. You think I'm joking? You should be looking for people to improve. Or things to improve, circumstances to change. God did not create man until there was work to do. He didn't create man. There was no need for him to create man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 and 3 and 4. He did not create man until there was work. He said this is the history of the heavens and the earth. When they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Verse 5. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no what? No man. Because there was no work to do, he didn't create man. And then in Genesis chapter 7, he now, he now created man. You were created to work. Our greatest, our greatest assignment here on earth is to become improvement officers. When you look at any situation, any circumstance, the first thing that should come to your mind is not to run away from it. How can I make it better? That's the first thing that should come to your mind. How can I make it better? There's a benefit in it for you. Forget about, let's say, maybe you're not the kind of person that is, you're not too spiritual. I'm saying that it brings glory to God, right? But you're saying in your heart, Pastor, what does it need for me? There's a benefit in it for you. Anytime you improve or build on anything, whatever is existing, you increase your net worth. The moment you improve on anything, the moment you build on, even if you pick somebody that is in the gutter and you introduce Christ to them, for the rest of their life, they will owe you. If they were genuinely converted through you, they will never forget you. Oh, yes. You don't talk about the fact that when you improve something, every improvement is a solution to someone's problem. Every single improvement. When you see something and you improve it, you are solving somebody's problem. And when you solve somebody's problem, you will increase your net worth. That is a personal benefit to you. A builder, and I've taught you this several times, and I'm going to say it again. A builder sees something that is common. And he makes slight changes, just very little changes. Very little changes. And they make it uncommon. And they make it better. People have cooked moi moi. The ordinary moi you guys eat, they have put it in leaves, added a few things to it and doubled the price. You can take the uncommon, when you have that focus in your mind that my life is to make something better, I'm talking to you graduates, set out looking for what to improve, just make a small tweak, very little tweak. The moment you change something and it looks uncommon and you improve it a little bit, you make it better, you are a superstar. Amen? Amen? Let me close, because we want to dance. Tell somebody again you are a builder. <laughs> Let me tell you the challenge of most builders, if you have it in your heart to do what I'm saying this morning. If you have it in your heart and you believe what I'm saying, the first thing that the devil will tell you is that you are powerless. The devil will tell you that you can, how, much, how much difference can you make as a person? Are you with me? The devil will whisper to you that you are powerless, but I tell you this morning, you are powerful. Amen. You are powerful. Amen. You are specially created for a purpose. And when God created you for that purpose, he fully empowered you. I stopped being powerless a long time ago. I, look, you may think I'm crazy, but I think I can do anything. I believe it. I believe it so much that I, I don't care what you think. I believe I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. Tell somebody you are, powerful. you are powerful. Tell them again you are, powerful. you are powerful. You are empowered by the one who owns all the powers. But you know the problem why we feel powerless? Because we compare ourselves. 
When you compare yourself, you diminish your power and your net worth. Write this down. You only feel powerless when you desire other people's power. You only feel poor when you desire other people's riches. Every time you desire what somebody else has, you empower them over you. Why? By this time, if you have been in this church for at least one week, you should know this answer. Because whoever has, whoever has what you want has power over you. It's the power women have over men. It's the power that the rich has over the poor. It's the power that your employer has over you. It's the power that the popular guy in your school have over you because you want popularity. Don't give up your power. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You were created with all the tools to be the best builder. As you start your life, maybe you are just going from kindergarten to first grade. You are going to meet new people, hard faces and soft faces. Some of them are bullies. Don't look at them. You are powerful. Maybe you are going from middle school to high school. High school is the toughest. Do you know how I, somebody said yesterday, I, would, I don't wish it on my enemy. But you are powerful. Be constantly reminded that you are carved from a stream that has endless power. Maybe you are going into college. Maybe you're out of college, you're just coming out. Or maybe your case is just that you are old. Don't give up your power. Because the Most High empowers you. Let us bow our heads. Are you here this morning? Even as I was talking about that most high, you don't feel it. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit of God. You don't have the tool to be empowered. You know about Jesus, but he's not your Lord and Savior. So you hear about the power, but you don't know what it feels like. That can change this morning. Because it says in Revelation 3, verse 20, I stand at the door and I knock. It is your prerogative to open the door. If you're here this morning and you want to open the door of your heart to him, he's willing to empower you. He's willing to take you up. If you will trust him, he's really waiting. If you're here this morning and you want to trust him with your life, just lift up your hands above your head and let me pray for you. You want to trust him with your life. You want to trust him with your life. Lift up your hands above your head. I want to see you and pray with you wherever you are. And I pray that as you lift up those hands, the King of Kings will empower you. The Lord of Lords will empower you. As you lift up those hands and just say, you are identifying with you, Jesus, I'm identifying with you today. Empower me. I am identifying with you today, Lord. Equip me. As I am lifting up my hands and you are saying to the Lord, Heavenly Father, Change me. If your hands are lifted up, I want to just say, Father, I love you. And I choose to submit my heart unto you this morning. Because you are the way maker. Make a way for me. Wash away my sins and write my name in the book of life. As I become yours, empower me to become a builder. To have the ability to change and make better whatever I come in contact. I pray for every member of this church. I pray that you will stand out. I pray that you'll be unique wherever you find yourself. I pray that you will be a change maker. I pray that whatever you touch will become gold. I pray that the concept 
of making things better will be your concept in life. And whatever you need to succeed, God will give unto you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord God.